Robin Hood, Chapter 3, The Tinker Joins Robin's Band The Sheriff of Nottingham had sworn to capture Robin Hood and collect the 200 pounds reward. But the Sheriff did not know about Robin's band, and he thought he could serve a warrant for his arrest on Robin, just as he would on any lawbreaker with the help of the citizens of the town. But the men of Nottingham Town knew of Robin and his doings, and many laughed when they thought of anyone handing the bold outlaw a warrant. They knew that all they would get would be cracked heads, so not one of them offered to serve the sheriff's warrant. After his failure in Nottingham Town, the sheriff sent a messenger to Ban Banbury Town. There, the messenger found a shaggy-haired tinker, a metal worker who thought he could easily capture this rascal Robin Hood. One bright morning, soon after this, Robin started off to Nottingham to find what was happening there. He walked merrily, and his eyes and thoughts wandered. His bugle horn hung at his hip, and his bow and arrows at his back. In his hand he carried an oaken staff, which he twirled with his fingers as he strolled along. As he strolled down a shady lane, Robin saw a tinker coming. The tinker's bag and his hammer hung on his back. He carried a strong staff and sang in a loud voice. Robin gave him a saucy greeting, and soon the two were joking and heading to the Blue Boar Inn for some home-brewed ale. "'Tell me your news, friend,' said Robin, "'for tinkers are always full of tales. "'I have a task that calls for all my wits. "'I seek a bold outlaw who men call Robin Hood. "'In my pouch I have a warrant with the sheriff's red seal on it. "'Do you know this Robin Hood, good fellow?' I saw him just this morning, said Robin, but tinkermen say he is sly, a sly fox. Be careful or he might steal your warrant right from your very pouch. He may be sly, but I am sly too, cried the tinker. What does the man look like, lad? Much like me, said Robin, my age, height, and build. He has blue eyes like mine too, and Robin winked at him. I thought he was a great bearded man, said the tinker. Not so large, said Robin, but men say he's a right good fighter. With this, they entered the Blue Boar Inn. No sweeter inn could be found, shaded and cool in the summer, cozy and full of good company in the winter. The inn was well known to Robin and his band. He and Little John, or Will Stutley, or young David of Doncaster, often gathered there when the forest was filled with snow. The innkeeper knew when to keep quiet, and when Robin and the tinker entered, he made no sign to give Robin away. Robin made sure the tinker drank deeply, while he only wet his lips. First the man sang, then his head began wagging, until at last he fell asleep. Then Robin laughed aloud, and quickly took the warrant from the tinker and disappeared. The next day, at a sudden bend in the road, Robin and the tinker met sharply face to face. Hello, my sweet bird, said Robin. The tinker was grim. Not only had he been left to pay the bill for the ale, but he now knew that it was Robin Hood himself who had tricked him. He spat upon his hands and came at Robin with his staff. Robin was quick and moved like a cat, but his staff broke under the tinker's mighty blows. <clears throat> Robin reached for his horn and blew three blasts loud and clear. Blow if you will, said the tinker, but you will go to the sheriff with me. Then Little John and six burly yeomen in Lincoln Green leaped out of the forest. Why do you blow your horn so loudly, good master, cried Little John. This tinker, said Robin, would like to take me to Nottingham to hang. He shall hang, cried Little John, and he began to tie the tinker's hand with his bowstring. No, said Robin, holding Little John's arm. He is a good man and brave too, and he sings a lovely ballad. Robin looked at the tinker and asked, Will you join my men? You shall have three suits of Lincoln Green and forty marks a year. The tinker agreed to the merry life, and they all headed back into the forest depths, where the tinker was to live forever, singing ballads to Robin Hood's band. End of chapter 3